Let's hit some buttons and add custom keybinds to Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in Telltale once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom keybinds to Minecraft. Now, this is going to be a very interesting thing indeed, and this is also part of a four part tutorial series of adding a custom thirst system to Minecraft. So first of all, of course, in this tutorial, we're going to be adding the custom key bindings. And the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about custom networking. Then after that, we're going to be talking about saving data on the player with some capabilities. And then last but not least, we're going to make a custom hut element on the basically the head up display for the player. Now, first and foremost, I want to say that while we're implementing a fully functioning thirst system here, you should not use this system in your mod. You shouldn't just copy it over and use it just like that in your own mod, because number one, there are still things that are not quite working right. And then secondly, also, this really is just an example to show you how you could implement such a thing. I very much recommend not just copying it over, especially if you're just a beginner. Do not just copy it over and put it into your mod. That way lies madness. All right, and one thing that is actually quite important that you need to note, and that is the version of Forge you're using. So currently I'm using 41096. Now this particular tutorial will definitely not be compatible with anything that's 41063 and lower, and it might also not be compatible with anything 41064. So keep that in mind. You will probably have to update. I did this in the last tutorial. I very much suggest you update as well. Otherwise, some of the things that we're discussing in the next few tutorials and, you know, the, and the rest of the series basically will probably not be compatible with these versions. So keep that in mind and that should be pretty much all that you need to do. But whatever the case may be, let's start with the keybinds first and foremost. We'll first of all start by making a new package in our tutorial mode package, and that's going to be called the util package. And then inside of there, we're going to make a new Java class called the key binding class. Now, to be honest, where this key binding class goes, you know, you can put it into the util package. You could also put it into a into a separate client package. I personally will just put it into the util package. That's going to be fine and that's going to be okay. Here, we're actually going to have three different fields. The first one is going to be a public static final string key called key underscore category underscore tutorial. Now, this is going to be the translation key, key dot category dot tutorial mod dot tutorial. So this is going to be the translation key for our category that we're going to basically put our keys under. And then we're going to have another string right here, which is going to be the key underscore drink underscore water. And that's going to be the key dot tutorial mod dot drink underscore water. And that is the name of the key that we're going to basically create just now. So this is going to be a public static final key mapping from net Minecraft client over there. And we're going to call this the drinking underscore key. And that is going to be equal to a new key mapping. First passing in the key drink water string. This is going to be the translation key of the actual, you know, thing we're going to be pressing. Then we're going to do the key conflict context dot in game. That is the second parameter. Then we're going to say input constants type and then use the key as here and then do glfw dot glfw key glfw underscore key underscore o let's say. So we're going to press the o key and then the last parameter is going to be the key category tutorial, and that should be all that we need to do right here. This is the way to do it. So this one right here would make it so that it's looking for a key to input. And then this, of course, makes it so that it's looking for a mouse to input should be fairly self-explanatory. And in this case, we're choosing the O key. So you can see there actually are, you know, pretty much all of the keys that you could ever press are on here. Now we want to press the O key, and that is basically the default key for this key bind. So let's actually immediately translate those names over here. So that's going to be happening in the ENR school years JSON file, of course. So we can basically just copy this over and just add this here, right? So this is, of course, going to be the translation. And the translation for this is just going to be the tutorial mod. You could also call this tutorial mod category or something similar to that, but that is going to be fine. And then the actual name of the key that we're having is going to be just the drink water key. 
So it's just going to be called drink water. And that is pretty much what we need to do. I highly recommend always adding your mod ID into the translation key over here. Otherwise, there might be some conflicts there. And of course, that's not quite what we want. Now, this has now added a key mapping. And of course, nothing right now happens when we press this. And therefore, we actually need another class. And that is going to be in the event package. We're going to right click new Java class called client events. We're actually going to make an inner class. So there's going to be a public static class called client Forge events. And this is going to have two different methods, public static void. The first one is the on e register method with a register e mappings event called event. We're going to fill this in just a moment. And the second one is a public static void on key input method with the input event dot key called event. Let's just type this out and then let's import this. So alt and enter. And there you go. So now we have the two methods over here and that should be fine. Right. So let's first of all start with the actual class. We want to add a mod over here. So let's just do mod and then delete the parentheses dot event bus subscriber. We can add the parentheses again. We want to do mod ID equals tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then we also want to say value equals dist dot client. Let's just write this and then we can go in here and actually import the dist as well. Then over the two methods, we want to say add subscribe event. Very important that we add this, otherwise it will not work. And then we should be fine. Now for the registration event here, it's actually going to be very, very straightforward. Event.register key binding that drinking key. There you go. And that is all that we need to do. Now our key is actually registered and it should appear in the options menu under our tutorial mode category. But once again, nothing happens at the moment when we actually press this. That is the, what the key input method is for. So we're going to say if key binding dot drinking key dot consume click, right? So if this particular key has been clicked, then we want to do something, right? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to be outputting something from the player into the chat. That is literally all that we're doing right now. We're not going to be sending any packets or anything like that, because that is something we're going to discuss in the next tutorial. So what we can say here is we can say Minecraft dot get instance dot player, and then we can just send a message. So send system message component dot literal, and we're just going to say rest a key. Now, why can we do, you know, the craziness of Minecraft get instance? Well, because this particular method will ever only be called on the client. So we know there only is one player, right? Even if we're on a server, your client is still only you. And that is basically the reason. So we can actually take a look at this key event and we should be able to see if we go up all the way. If we get, go all the way up, we can actually see it is in the client package. That is one indication basically also that that is the case. But also I believe so it should ever only happen for the client. You know, key binds actually don't exist on the server. Therefore, this should basically always be on the client. Therefore, we can do this. Now, once again, this is just one example. Once we've actually implemented some networking, then we're going to be sending a packet over here. But for the time being, we're just going to output something just so that we know that our key actually works. Hello, future Compendro here to tell you that there was a little bit of a mistake in the placement of this particular method. This actually goes into another class. So we actually have to create a second static class over here, which is going to be called the client mod bus events. And then what we can do is we could just completely cut this out, put it in here. Let's also add the add mod event bus over here. And then here we also want to say bus equals mod bus dot mod. There you go. Now, the reason for this is if we actually go into the register key mappings event, you can see this is an I mod bus event, meaning that this has to happen with the mod bus. And this basically happens for forge events. Therefore, we actually need to split it up. Otherwise, if we don't do this, then the key mapping will not appear in the options menu. So that's very important. And now we can go in and see if it works. All right, we found us in Minecraft and let's first of all go into the options menu controls key binds and at the very bottom, there we go, the tutorial mod category with the drink water key being, oh, there you go. So the water key has been properly registered. Let's also see if I press it, if we get a output in the chat. And indeed we do press a key and we can do it again and do it again. We can even hold it down. It should, you know, just continue to go up basically. And I mean, this is pretty awesome already. Now, of course, you know, we're not doing anything particularly interesting yet, but just having added a custom key bind already pretty freaking awesome. So to properly do something with a custom keybind, you basically always are going to need networking. So this is going to be perfect for the next tutorial displayed right here once it's available. Hope to see you there. So yeah, 